Yo, what is going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show video. In this one, I'm going to discuss a particular strategy slash team building aspect of Diamond Dynasty and reference a small experiment that I've been doing over the last couple months in MLB The Show 19. I think this information is going to be useful moving forward into MLB The Show 20 and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. If you could drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new, that would be greatly appreciated. So first, let's discuss this experiment I've been doing. Essentially, I've been using lesser known, lower overall pitchers at relatively high levels of play, uh, this being Championship Series and World Series games in particular, to kind of see how they perform. I was messing around mostly with starting pitchers, if nothing else, because there are more of them to play around with. Um, lesser known relievers that I've been known to love include postseason Ryan Helsley, 87 Zach Britton, etc. Uh, for the sake of this video and this particular experiment, however, I'm going to be focusing primarily on starting pitchers. So here's how it went down. I filled my rotation with lesser known starters that I was a fan of using to see how they perform. Uh, the starters I chose included 93 Jake Arrieta, 90 Cliff Lee, 90 Tommy John, 88 Johnny Cueto, and 86 Dallas Keuchel. I grinded all the way to World Series with this rotation and had a pretty decent spread of usage of each of these pitchers, uh, aside from Jake Arrieta, who I was unable to pitch with because of the starting pitcher selection RNG, I just never landed on him. So what I discovered during this run was that these pitchers were performing at least as good and oftentimes much better than a lot of the meta pitchers in the game. Uh, now, level of competition could have been a factor here. Um, definitely lower level of competition on the way up to World Series as the game cycle moves farther and farther along. Uh, but I'll reiterate that I was climbing all the way up to World Series doing this, which is the pinnacle for a lot of people who play this game. Um, but some of these pitchers, specifically Dallas Keuchel, Cliff Lee, and Tommy John, performed insanely well, especially considering how low their per nines are and how stacked people's lineups are at this point in the year. So why was this happening? You may also be saying, see Brev, you were able to climb the World Series with these terrible starting pitchers because you just out hit your opponents. Uh, this was simply not the case and the statistics back it up. 86 Dallas Keuchel had an ERA under three and a half in four stars, which is actually insanely low considering how hitter friendly the meta is right now. And Tommy John's collective ERA for me since he came out has been under three the entire time. Um, this is all occurring in an extremely hitter friendly meta, like I said, since the removal of home runs per nine from online play. Also, as a side note, I did include both 86 Dallas Keuchel and 90 Tommy John in my rotation for two of my most recent tournaments when I was playing against some of the best players in the world just to see how they'd fare against the best of competition, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to land on either of them in any of my games, so kind of a bummer. I tried. <laughs> um, so the question is, do I have a magic secret that nobody knows about? Uh, definitely not, but I think the concept I'm going to dive into is an important one. For how the meta shifts during the year in MLB The Show, I want to talk about something called pitcher familiarity. This is a concept that fascinates me. So. Remember in April slash May of this year when 99 Clayton Kershaw was essentially unhittable and a lot of Kershaw versus Kershaw matchups were ending in 1-0 to zero or 2-1 to one scores on Hall of Fame and Legend. Um, and then by summer, Kershaw was slightly less overpowered. And today, even though he's still the best pitcher in the game, he's nowhere close to where he once was from a power level standpoint. So this has a lot to do with the power creep of hitters and the removal of home runs per nine. Obviously, hitters get better, hitter cards get better over the course of the game cycle, and the removal of home runs per nine was huge for the offensive meta. Uh, but it also has to do with pitcher familiarity, so here's how it works. Certain pitchers become meta selections. Because they're meta selections and considered some of the best options in the entire game, they are used extremely frequently by everyone who's playing on a competitive level. Therefore, over time, the frequency of at-bats against these pitchers rises and people begin to adjust at the plate. This makes these pitchers less effective relatively as people have seen them so many times that hitting against them has become slightly easier for them. Uh, this is kind of like bacteria that slowly adjust to vaccinations. You hear about how bacteria will develop new strains that are vaccination immune over time. 
This is kind of the same thing in MLB The Show, especially with certain pitchers and certain sequencing. Um, the more meta a pitcher is, the more he's used and the more he's seen, and therefore the more he's seen, the better people perform against him over time and the worse he becomes in the meta relatively. Um, the other side of this coin is the reason that I believe these pitchers that I used were so effective in my experiment. Uh, nobody had hit against these guys since maybe April and May, if ever. I can almost guarantee that I played against someone who had not faced 86 Dallas Keuchel a single time the entire year. Uh, this is a huge advantage on the mound, even with the lower per nines making it theoretically easier for my opponents to hit. Um, additionally, Keuchel, Lee, and John fit an archetype that was pretty uncommon in the meta this year, being left-handed and two-seamer or sinker primary. Uh, this was the perfect storm of pitches and pitch sequencing that people were simply not used to seeing. This often led to swings on borderline pitches for easy contact outs, as well as visible mental frustration. So what would happen is, the longer the game went on, I could tell my opponents were thinking, I've, wow, I've really only scored two runs in five innings against 86 Dallas Keuchel. This is ridiculous. And then as the game went on, the quality of their swings diminished greatly. The quality of their at-bats went down a lot. It would slowly dwindle over time until all of a sudden they looked up and they had only scored two runs and it was the eighth inning. So this is a very palpable effect that I think not many people have analyzed. Um, and it's definitely important to look into for the meta moving forward in MLB The Show 20. So what's the point? What am I getting at? I wanted to discuss the concept of pitcher familiarity moving into MLB The Show 20. What does it mean for the meta? How can you be successful on the mound using this concept? So firstly, it's safe to say that the beginning meta in every game cycle is pitcher friendly. Uh, the cards of hitters are generally lower overalls aside from the collection rewards. And the meta for pitches that are good and bad hasn't yet been established. Um, this year this meta was sinkers and cutters as the best pitches in the game. And this actually works in favor of the pitcher in uh, the beginning of the game cycle when this meta hasn't been established because there's a lot more dissonance, there's a lot more variance. Um, people don't understand what pitches are best and so people can throw any pitch at any time essentially. Um, there's a lot less predictability and anticipation that you can go to as a hitter at the plate during the first couple of months of the game cycle. Um, the pitching is much more dissonant by nature and so this is an advantage to uh, using lesser known pitchers. So you can use this to your advantage to improve your pitching greatly um, over the first couple months by using pitchers that people have not seen very much of. This is one of the main reasons that I believe Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, Mariano Rivera, and any additional new legends we will be getting that are pitchers. I think that all these guys should see a good amount of success early in the game cycle, assuming they're available. Uh, this is because nobody has seen them in Diamond Dynasty before, so the pitcher familiarity is extremely low, and it's going to be much harder to perform well at the plate against these guys when you haven't really seen any of their stuff. I had an insane amount of success with the 96 Cy Young during the first two months of MLB The Show 19 for this very reason. Even though a good amount of people were using him at the time, um, because starting pitcher selection is RNG based, you just simply don't see a guy like that enough to get comfortable against him until multiple months down the line and even to the point where he might have cycled out of the meta entirely. So what's the plan moving into MLB The Show 20? Well during the first couple of months I would say to look for starting pitchers that are good enough on paper to compete but that also may induce a lack of familiarity from your opponents at the plate. Um, keep in mind being cute. And what I mean by being cute is like filling your entire rotation with lesser known guys and avoiding meta pitches entirely. Um, I would kind of avoid this until a couple months down the line because being cute with your pitcher selection is the least effective at the very beginning of the game cycle because essentially every pitcher is unseen to a certain degree. Every pitcher is has a lack of familiarity to some extent. So this really starts to take hold this really starts to become a good strategy maybe a month or two into the game cycle. Um, as the meta shifts over time, as the meta shifts over the first month or two, this is where you can really take advantage of pitcher familiarity. 
Uh, these final pushes to World Series or whatever your goal is can be greatly improved by simply changing up your starting pitcher rotation to something that people are not used to hitting against. Uh, I think it's truly a powerful tool. You can kind of steal wins against people uh, because they just can't score in the first five or six innings because they're just not used to seeing the pitcher that you're using. So I think it's really good for climbing ranked seasons um, because you never know when you're going to face a guy who's just completely lost at the plate um, because they've literally never seen the pitcher that you're using. So I know I've rambled a long time in this video, but I hope I got my point across. This is not some secret formula to help you carry a one ERA all the way to World Series in the first month of the game. However, it can help you on that final push to your goals. And more importantly, it can help you to analyze metas and counter metas with pitching as we progress through the game cycle. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you made it this far, you are truly a real one. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I am always eager to help. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.